Hey, greetings from Happy Dog Farm. I just shot the whole video and realized I didn't have the camera recording. I get to do it again. Uh, April 16th, 2011. It's a very blustery day in our neck of the woods, so I'm working inside. And today I'm working on my fermentation tanks. Now you may remember that I am investigating using biodiesel tanks um, because they're much more affordable than stainless steel and they seem to do a pretty good job. Uh, you can see what I've got here. I have a 15 gallon on the right and a 60 gallon on the left. In a perfect world, I will fill them both. This would be really cool. Now, a little recap. Last year, I was very sad that valve leaked. Um, and I lost a lot of really good cider that I bought at Juice Ed Cider Day in Massachusetts. And it all ended up on the floor. And I was traumatized and I don't want it to happen again so I started investigating ways to make that valve not leak now you need to know why the valve leaked Oops, let me get this right it leaked because of this this is the backing ring on that valve it's a great valve it's a crappy backing ring good valve bad ring good valve bad ring throw it away what I did is I went to U.S. Plastics and I bought two three-quarter inch bulkhead connectors. Okay, smooth on the inside. It's actually fitted for pipe. Threaded. Big and honker. Not quite so big, but threaded. Really nice. Very. I think $10 each. I bought four of them. Very good investment. What I did is I replaced what looked like that. And now you get that. And this is what's, let me get the cord out of the way, that's what's inside. Okay, I'm not going to have any leaks. That's, that's the plan, no leaks. So I'll be pressure testing this later, but I just can't see that failing. It's very secure, and then the valve is threaded into that bulkhead con connector for, uh, well it doesn't work for you, for a, uh, a really good, robust connection. What I like about these valves is that they have a very tiny hole in the front. When you're dispensing fluid, it's going straight. But when you close the valve, that's exposed. It allows the rest of your hose to drain out. So you don't have a lot of fluid trapped up in here. That's, that's a pretty sweet feature. Also, it's barbed, so I can push a hose onto it. I like that. These are good. They just don't have good backings on them. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is you probably have a airlock that looks like that or like that and those were fine for five gallons but what I'm finding is on the 15 when it was running it was really cooking that puppy it was blowing pretty hard I don't even want to know what the 60 is going to do I got this airlock cheap got marbles in it oh marbles one is to allow air in if you start to draw a vacuum like you're taking a sample. That's when you used to slurp some of your sulfite into the, into the cider. Don't want to do that. And the other one is allows it to breathe out. It's just enough. I got this from GW Kent in Michigan. I bought two of them. I like them. And this one's going to go on the big tank. And I'm going to keep one in reserve. I'm going to stay with the little one on the small tank. We'll see how that works out. Um, what else is going on here? Well, this is actually going to keep me busy for a while because getting that valve on required a small child. I'm not going to go into the details, but it was really ugly. And I have to find another small child to climb in there for me. So I'm doing valves. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the important part. Initially, I'll make sure I'm in the right way. Initially, I had tried welding a valve on. And I use plastic. Well, that's not RTV. That's plastic filler from a hot air welder. And, well, I'm not very good at this. And it really was the wrong thing to do. Don't try it. And RTV, not going to work on this material. It won't stick. You need to buy the bulkhead connector. Also, if you have something, a valve like this, cut into the side of a tank, trying to enlarge the hole the little bit you've got to do, it's not a good idea to try and overdrill it with a bigger hole saw 
or to use a knockout. You'll tear and mess up the plastic. You really, you want to cut it carefully. And I can't really emphasize careful enough. So the tool I used, I borrowed my wife's Dremel, got the router head to give me some control, and I have what's really effectively a drywall bit in there, which has got very sharp flutes on it. I don't think you can see that so good. Nope. But it cuts sideways. Warning. It, wa it has a lot of torque, and it's very aggressive. It wants to run to the right in a clockwise motion when the thing's running, which would destroy your tank. Practice on something thick. A uh, big, thick piece of plastic you already get. You'll figure it out. Draw lines and try and follow the line, stay in the lines, and you always want to work in a counterclockwise motion if you're doing an arc. That gives you more control over the bit. You've got a little bit of play because of the gaskets and like, but you don't have a lot. You don't have that much. So uh, this was a very worthwhile investment. We already had the Dremel tool. You could probably borrow one from a friend. Um, the bits, uh, I actually got them at Walmart. I was really amazed. So they're cheap. They're affordable, much cheaper than the tanks, so you don't want to screw it up. Ah, uh, I don't know. That's that's my thing for today. It's like really, really windy outside today, and I don't want to go outdoors, so I'm doing this inside. Anyway, I wish you all very well. This is the further um, exploits of my mega big tank thing, and I'll let you know how it works. But definitely get bulkhead fittings, the thread on bulkhead fittings. Don't try and just put the valve through the, it just, that backing is lousy. It doesn't work. I lost some good juice. All right, take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.